Uh, my name is Craig Kibberger. I have the pleasure to work with a lot of your uh, sons and daughters here in Calgary at an event we do called We Day. We work with about 5,000 schools across the country bringing service learning to come alive. But in the spirit of talking about something a little bit different, I wanted to actually chat about something um, different from our core work in Canada, something on an international scope inspired by the fact that if you open a newspaper today on the international section, you constantly see Sierra Leone. And Sierra Leone is a country that for a long time was not in the news. And that absence from the news inspired something that taught me a great lesson on philanthropy. It was actually the moment when, in my case, I realized some of the limits of traditional philanthropy. I started for the children um, almost 20 years now. And one of the countries where we started our work was in Sierra Leone. So for about a decade, we'd been active in the country after the war had ended. Uh, NGOs flooded in, and sadly, they also flooded out, as we see so often is the norm. It's a um, region that went through a desperate civil war. It was uh, over a decade of fighting 30,000 child soldiers, a country left devastated. We have a model in the work that we do that requires uh, about five years of development. We bring in schools, clean water, health, alternative income projects, and it's about five years before we're able to phase out and ensure that those projects run themselves. But we were encountering a problem, and it was the same problem that almost every organization faced. It was that Sierra Leone, well, Sierra Leone wasn't in the news. You know, the nonprofit world, which seems to so often lurch crisis to crisis, it's the tsunami hitting Southeast Asia, it's the earthquake in Haiti, it's uh, uh, something that affects Japan, it's a drought in Southeast Asia, it's another one that affects East uh, Africa. We lurch crisis to crisis, and humanitarian aid, of course, is necessary, but long-term aid, sustainable development, is what allows people to truly lift themselves out of poverty once and for all. And we saw the writing on the wall where we were running out of money. And I'll never forget being at the dock one time, talking to an aid worker, and he said he wasn't shipping more supplies in, they were all shipping out. And so we were so desperate wanting to continue our projects that we did something in the charitable world that was very unusual. We reached out of the charitable world into the world of social enterprise. Now, I believe that governments, foundations, giving corporations, individuals all have an incredible role to play in philanthropy. But I also believe that social enterprise is an emerging trend, something that we're seeing with amazing results. When you look at the nonprofit sector in Canada, there's actually one nonprofit for every 200 people. It's the reason why competition is so scarce for dollars. It's the reason why that's the average spent on fundraising. The telemarketers, the gala dinners, it seems like a nuclear arm race in the nonprofit world trying to raise money. But what if we could do something different? In fact, what if we could create a way that would earn the income to sustain nonprofits? We looked at the women we worked with who in East Africa, do beautiful traditional beadwork and realize they don't need charity. They need a means to sell their product. We called it Midawi artisans, these women doing beautiful pieces, lifting themselves out of poverty and talk to companies and retailers to create something that's without cost for them, extra space to sell these items. Today, 1,200 women do this beadwork full-time. They each own their own small business, lifting themselves out of poverty. And then we thought, well, let's push this further. Why can't, if we're going to reinvent part of the idea of how we do good, let's add a dose of my generation of technology into it. You know, I can track a UPS package. Why can't I track a charitable donation? I can check in or I can follow things on Facebook. Why can't I see exactly where my donation or my purchase impact goes? So we attached on every product an eight-digit code that the purchaser can put online and see exactly what they're doing for social impact and exactly where it went in the world, down to the map, down to the detail of that tree, that pencil, that inoculation, exactly where in the world. It, in fact, grew from that to a clothing line made in Canada, organic clothing, to greeting card divisions, to volunteer travel, all of these things that help fund the work. But more than that, they create sustainable impacts themselves. 
We can actually track the jobs created. We can track the schools built by our volunteers, for example, around the world, locally helping communities. We can track our volunteers when they come back, shifting their mindsets, how they keep doing social good. We can even track our alumni who, as a result of going overseas, keep giving. 80% keep volunteering. 83% give to a charity every year. 79% voted in the last national election. 50% of our profits immediately going to the charity cover our min costs. 50% get reinvested to keep growing the social enterprise. In fact, it's why our min cost is so low. Our dream is to bring our min to zero, that we earn every dollar that funds our administration costs. But here's the kicker in the story and my favorite part. We're still in Sierra Leone. We didn't pull out because the income we were able to bring in and all these years later now, find Sierra Leone's back in the news, but... In Kono, the schools, the clean water, the health, the medical projects keep running. And I think at the end of the day, that's what motivates all of us in the nonprofit world. Sustained impact. Thank you.